Hello, everyone. Oh, sorry, Dan. It's all right, you know what I look like. So, as Pete said, I'm continuing our series this evening and looking at actions in the book of Acts. Thank you, Rich. Acts is an amazing book. I'd encourage you to read it if you haven't yet started it or you're about to, because it reveals the action adventures of the apostles in the early church. And with that lens in mind, it, it gets, gets you really exciting. So, so why are we looking at Acts? Well, the stories of their adventure show us what it looks like when heaven invades earth, which was kind of what Pete was describing happens. The supernatural can happen when we gather here at 286. But the early church, the community of believers, they were radical. They were supernatural. They were sacrificial. They were absolutely obsessed with Jesus. And they were absolutely bold as well. And they impacted culture. They raised up new leaders and this is a picture of what we want, isn't it? This is what we want city life to be. This is what we want Southampton to look like, a culture on fire with the kingdom of God at hand. And tonight, I'm looking at the second significant action in Acts, which was from Peter, who stood up. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. And it's not the stood up that some of you may have thought from the email that some of us received in the week as the disciples were stood up. <laughs> Which I thought, you'd be disappointed if you think that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So let's look at the scripture that I'm fo focusing on. We start in Acts 1. During this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. Brothers, he said, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Acts 1. So then again, in Acts 2, when the, disi when the disciples had the Holy Spirit fall on them, we heard a bit about that last week as well, they each began to speak in tongues. And everyone around them in the city wanted to know what was going on. That's when Peter stood up, backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency, fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully, get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of, some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine in the morning. Acts 2. So Peter went on to preach an amazing talk. Read it in Acts 2. And that's when the early church was birthed. And just a small appeal, 3,000 people came to know Jesus that day. How amazing is that? 3,000 off the back of one talk. So, but all the disciples had been encouraged by Jesus before he left them to advance the kingdom, to make disciples of all nations. But it was Peter who stood up. He took a lead. He set the fledgling church community back on track, moving forward. He wasn't invited to speak or lead. One of the other disciples didn't nudge him and say, it's your turn, you're on. He saw the gap, he trusted God, and he got to his feet. I just love Peter's response. It's so inspiring, isn't it? He's bold, he's courageous, he's full of passion. He wants to get the message out there. Jesus has risen from the dead. But Peter was on a fast track of development too. Because standing up before the 120 believers in Acts 1, he actually got everyone to vote for a new disciple because Judas had obviously died and they were down to 11. And as the scripture had said, we need a replacement. 
And so he'd, he'd acted and got that happening. But that actually prepared him to stand up in Acts 2 under the greater anointing of the Holy Spirit and address thousands of unchurched people. And I want to put it and suggest to you tonight that it's for us to do the same as Peter, to identify the need, to stand up, to trust God and bring that kingdom response. These opportunities may start small, but if we're faithful and willing to stand up, we, can, we will see that God can build on them and give us greater opportunities and greater anointing in the future. You remember David in the Old Testament? He started, didn't he, as a shepherd boy, fighting bears and liars, lions on the hillside, looking after his sheep. And he proved himself trustworthy as a, a really good shepherd, protecting his sheep. And then the opportunity came to slay a giant to save his nation Israel. And he put himself forward for that. David used what he'd learnt on the hillside, killing bears and lions, to slay the giant. He used the stone and the catapult. David became a giant slayer. And that opened the door for others to follow. Because it says, because after that, many of the men followed and killed giants. But it took David to stand up. So it creates a corporate courage that brings change. When we stand up, we will inspire others to stand and to follow. The same happened when Peter stood up. The other disciples took, took courage and began speaking and healing and preaching too. You can read about it if you carry on after Acts 2 and you see all the other disciples mobilized too. So I want to suggest that it's not just about us individually standing up, stepping up, but it's about us together changing culture. Together we can change culture, we can bring change in Southampton, we can bring in God's kingdom, and we may not know or see the small part we play. To move anything forward in the kingdom and to change culture requires someone to see the need, to stand up, to trust God, and to bring the kingdom in. So let's not underestimate the day of small beginnings. This is where I feel I'm at. You may too. Because as we know, it says to encourage us in Scripture, Zechariah 4, do not despise small, these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So what could a small beginning look like for us? It may not be God's calling you to lead his church as Peter, but he will give you his empowerment to advance his kingdom wherever you are placed. So let's not dismiss the opportunities at hand. They may seem small because we're giving God something that he can build on. Some examples. Maybe those around you are gossiping about a friend or a colleague and you need to speak truth and you need to bring out the good. Maybe you have a neighbour or a colleague who's sick and needs healing. Maybe you're aware of bullying that's going on in the environment that you're in and you need to speak up for someone who isn't speaking up for themselves. You might feel impassioned about protecting the environment. You might want to be setting up a reducing plastic scheme or a car sharing scheme. For me, I was invited to lead my school Christian Union um, when I was 15. I think I was year, about year 10. And it would, it always traditionally been led, it wasn't a big Christian union in the school that I was at, but it always traditionally been led by sixth formers. And so when the guy 
asked me, I, I just felt too young. I, didn't, I felt totally inexperienced and incapable of leading. But even though I was certainly younger than anyone who'd done it before, I stood up to meet the need and I offered myself. And this small beginning was the start of my training to trust God and to learn how to lead others. So, I'd hate you not to be able to see me. What a shame that would be. <laughs> we can feel there are barriers to standing up. I asked my discipleship group, um, what holds them back? What are some of the things that, that stop us from stepping up, being like Peter? And they shared that fear plays a massive part. What other people think is a biggie. That up what other people think carried more weight than actually what they felt. And maybe about themselves, about others. There was a fear of failing, getting things wrong, making mistakes. And that belief that others are somehow more gifted, more capable of standing up. The, I shouldn't be here, I'm an imposter syndrome. And also added to some of these beliefs are things like, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm overwhelmed, I've just got no time, no capacity for anything else. Anyone resonate with any of these feelings, beliefs? I know I do. These beliefs will stop us from standing up growing, influencing, being the, the people that God has called us to be. And so I just want to address three of these beliefs tonight with scripture, and I want to encourage us to use them to declare the scripture and allow God to bring truth, to bring revelation to us, and encourage you to get healing prayer if, if you still feel like things aren't opening up for you and it's becoming easier. So maybe you feel too young. I'm glad we've got some young ones in the building. Who's this? Anyone know who that is? Young or old? It is. It's, it's the lovely Greta Thunberg, yeah. How old is she? 15, someone saying? Yeah, 15, thank you. So we got to hear about her, didn't we? Social media, probably around August 2018, when she be began spending her school days outside the Swedish parliament with that sign saying, school strike for the climate. And the rest is history. She's known as someone who stood up. And what an inspiration, because many of us, the world is now slowly getting on board with that cry, that campaign for the environment. And I love that picture there of the crowd. So she started alone. Look what happened when she stood up. Let that inspire some of the young and the old here today. But in the New Testament, a young boy offered his lunch the five loaves and the two fish. There was a need. There was no food for about 5,000 people. He offered it. He could have refused. He could have legged it. He could have just said, no, I'm hungry. But he didn't. He offered it. And look what God did as he stepped up. Look what, what Jesus did. The miracle happened and uh, 5,000 people were fed. You can read more about that in John 6. For those that may feel too old to stand, to step up, Billy Kennedy brought a word to us in June 2019. It was the scripture from John 15. And it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you will, wish and it will be given you. 
This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I want to say to you 50 pluses here tonight, it's a season of prayer and greater fruitfulness and that you would see more fruitfulness now than in the last 40 years of activity. That was what Billy specifically said. Get your hopes up. And this was confirmed by Mark Gamblin um, just a couple of weeks later in June who prophesied, it's your time, there will be more stories now than in younger years. I want to encourage you, this is for you. It's time to stand up. Another barrier that can hold us back is the belief that we're not qualified to meet the need. Others are more gifted, more able. Anyone ever thought that? I have. The annoying thing, <laughs> can I say that? Is that that's exactly how God likes it. He wants us to rely on him. We are in such good company when we feel unqualified. We haven't got all the resources. I am, I'm not the most gifted person to step up into that gap. Peter had no training in scripture. He had no formal education. He was a fisherman. He was strong. He was practical. He was hot-headed. He was that person, you know. He was the fisherman. He wasn't the public speaker. <laughs> and yet, we can see from Acts, and it's so inspiring, that he saw a need and he stepped up. He stood up and he told people about Jesus and his kingdom. He preached. He healed the sick. It says in Acts 4, and I love this. I think this is from the message. They couldn't take their eyes off them. Peter and John, standing there so confident, so sure of themselves, their fascination deepened when they realized these two were laymen. They had no training in scripture or formal education. They recognized them as companions of Jesus. But with the man right before them, seeing him standing there so upright, so healed, what could they say against that? The Holy Spirit qualifies us. I speak this to myself because I need to hear it as much as I'm saying it to you. God promises that those he calls, he equips. He wants us to rely on him, not on our confidence of natural talent, ability to speak, ability to pray for people, ability to lead. God uses the Gideons. He was the least, he was the smallest tribe person. Remember him? And he was asked to take on the Midianites, the ruthless enemy at the time. God uses the unqualified to work a miracle. So the message is he wants us to trust in him and not ourselves. And he promises to give us and equip us with all, he ne with all we need. And this promise is for us from Hebrews 13. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. It's good news if you feel unqualified. The last belief that I want to address is one that I've struggled with over the years. Feeling fearful of getting things wrong, making mistakes and it stopped me stepping out, it stopped me taking risks and getting out of my comfort zone at times but God has been speaking to me about this as I've been talking to him in healing prayer and, and other ways and he's shown me 
that I'm not perfect and therefore I will make mistakes. I know this is a big shock to some of you. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. <laughs> but I'm covered by Jesus' righteousness because he's perfect and his grace covers and redeems my messes and my mistakes. I can't tell you how much I need to hear this. It's so, so relieving. It's such great news for those of us that get crippled by perfectionism. It's rubbish. <laughs> it really, really is. So we can receive his forgiveness and forgive ourselves where we need to. And the scripture that I'm holding on to, and I'd encourage you to, <clears throat> is this wonderful one in Romans 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. So the wonderful news for me and for you is that it's not all on us to be perfect, to get it right, to never make a mistake. We're, we're loved. We're under such grace God wants us to be just to knowing more of that. We've been singing about it tonight. The unending love, the amazing grace. It brings such freedom from fear. And I really would encourage you, these scriptures are releasing. They can deliver us from fear. Do take them, declare them, receive them. And also God's grace. And this is something that I'm... I'm God showed me that I needed to almost like drink it. <laughs> I always like things that are very visual. So he just sort of showed me that I needed to drink grace every day. <laughs> because the amount of times I was taking it clearly wasn't enough. <laughs> it's got to be every day. We need his grace just to cover us. So I want to encourage us to be ruthless with any barriers to standing up and making our contribution and seeing God's kingdom come. This is why we're here. This is what it's all about. If you've got any doubt what we're, what we're living for, we're living for God's kingdom here in Southampton on this earth where you are in your workplace, in your home, in your family. This is what it's all about. And if we stay held back, not wanting to stand up, then we miss the joy. We miss the joy that God has for us of seeing, well, I've, in reading the whole of Acts, if you count the amount of um, times that there's healings, that there's salvations, that there's um, everything getting shared, there's such joy in Acts. This is what God has for us. In the standing up and the stepping out, there is joy, there is fulfillment. And I think that that far outweighs the fear and the sacrifice that is also part of the journey. So who knows where standing up will take you? As some of you know, I'm involved in leading AMBER, which is a chaplaincy service reaching out to women involved in the sex industry here in Southampton. But this started with me saying yes to being invited to be a trustee of the gate back in 2008 and I could never have guessed where we would be, where I would have ended up. When I stood up to do that, I couldn't see what I see today and today women are encountering God on the streets when we pray for them. We've had some women coming to Alpha through Amber. There's such joy, there's such good things when we say our yes when we stand up and sometimes it starts small so I just want to close by maybe you thinking about your setting where's God giving you opportunity to stand up influence lead I just want to give you a moment just to think about that and allow God to speak to your imagination and then I'm just going to close by praying.
I'd like to invite everyone to stand, if you're able. Feels appropriate to stand up. If you're happy, why don't you put out a hand or two? Because I, I just believe that God wants to impart his spirit afresh. And that's what I want to pray for you, if you'll let me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came back at Pentecost and you anointed the disciples with great boldness and they were forever changed. <clears throat> and I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come right now to each person here who wants more of yourself. Would you come with that courage? Would you come with boldness? And I ask that you'd bring clarity to see opportunities as they come. And you'd help us to know when to stand up. And Father, I pray where there are things holding us back, would you deal with those things? Would you show us? Would you speak your truth to us? that we can shed those fears, that we can embrace the joy of what you have for us. And just thank you, God, that your kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. And we want that here in our homes, in our workplaces, in our city. So I just pray, God, anoint each of us right now for such a time as this, that we would stand up and be counted. And we would bring cultural change in our city, in this time. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you for listening.